how on earth did you get a pilot's license with your autism? Hyperfocus, excellent reflexes, all the meltdowns, robot, crazy, Down syndrome. <laughs> and one of the chief characteristic of autistic females is that they're loners and they have no friends. Autistic females are loners who have no friend. Unless their case of autism is extremely mild, they probably want to think twice about being a, a pilot in command flying solo, you know, for their own safety. What if they have a meltdown in the cockpit? Hello everyone, good morning. I want to talk a little bit about, how, how do I even be begin to say this subject? I want to talk a little bit about female autism. Female autism. I want to talk a little bit about female autism. Yes, f autism exists mostly for guys, but also females get autism as well. I want to talk about some of the characteristic traits of females with autism. I want to try and be as clear as possible and as concise as possible so that you who knows nothing about female autism can subtly know a hell of a lot about female autism. I've been researching this subject quite intensively over the last week. Since I, since I had an aha moment where I realized somebody that I know that's female has autism. First and foremost, female autists, fe females with autism, they have what's called a special interest. A special interest is basically an obsession. It's something that they're really, really interested in. Think of it like a hobby, but it goes way over and above a hobby to be like more like a, an obsession or a professional interest. Even though a professional interest usually is to make money, uh, female autistic uh, people, female, female autists, will have a special interest that goes to a professional level, even though they're not making money from it. They're just so motivated to be interested in this one hobby that it's as though they're professional at it. They're capable of focusing on one thing to the exclusion of most of everything else. They have a very limited set of things that they restrict themselves to in terms of interests and if you're not talking about those interests they're not likely to talk to you uh, about anything that you're talking about they're not interested in making small talk so just say a female autist special interest is air combat flight sims and just say you're talking about birthday cakes she might not want to talk to you about birthday cakes but if you talk about air combat flight sims she won't shut up that's the only thing that she'll ever talk about and she'll talk about it with genuine passion and enthusiasm. But if you start talking about birthday cakes, for example, she's not interested in that. I'm sorry, but she's not gonna be able to talk to you about that. So this is some kind of an insight into the, the special interest mindset of female autists. So autistic females also have often excellent reflexes. Uh, there's, a, there's even a video on YouTube of an autistic female telling you one of her characteristics as an autistic female is she has excellent reflexes. Her reflexes are noticeably better than other people's. She's not being egotistical. People have, have told her, you have excellent reflexes. And people have been amazed at her excellent reflexes. And that's also what autistic females are known for. They're known for having, sometimes, excellent reflexes. Uh, female autists, are highly sensitive people physically. So that means certain clothing, they don't like to wear it because it, it causes them physical pain. Uh, they have excellent hearing. Their hearing is in some ways better than normal people hearing, you could say. Female autists have very photosensitive eyes. They can't really be in bright light. They don't like bright lights. For example, I used to work with a guy that I, I suspected that he was autistic and one of the things that he used to do, they'd set him up in a part in the office that was a little bit less bright. It was sort of a bit darker where he was in that little corner of the office. And he also had these, these uh, spectacles that he would wear that had a rose tint to them. So he had like a slightly darkened spectacles. His spectacles had some kind of a sunglass effect to them. 
it might have been one of those ones that gets darker as it goes outside and gets lighter as it goes inside. He was always wearing these. And uh, so female autists are, are, are photo sensitive. So you'll find them always wearing sunglasses. If you know a woman that's always wearing sunglasses, it could be because she's autistic, because autistic females are often highly sensitive people who are photosensitive, they're sensitive to sunlight or even just bright lights in the office. They need a darker, darker light setting. So you're starting to get some insight into f autistic females. Autistic females prefer to hang around with older guys. Autistic females prefer to hang around with older guys. They don't like to hang around with females. Autistic females do not like to hang around with females. They like to hang around with males. And they like to hang around with older people, both men and women that are older, but particularly guys. The reason for this, they state themselves, is because females are more complicated to have a relationship with. I know I've got to clean this part of my car, it's a bit dirty. Hey look, this is a working car, I drive it in muddy conditions and everything, so it's going to be a little bit dirty sometimes, it's very clean on the outside though. <laughs> I recently had this car bogged in the mud for three days straight. This car really goes into some crazy off-road situations. That's another story. Female autistic people prefer the company of older people and of males because they find older people easier to deal with. I guess, I guess that's what it is. And they find males easier to deal with because it, they find it harder to have a relationship with a female because they consider females to be more complicated to have a relationship with less simplistic to have a relationship with a female more complicated so autistic females like to hang around with older guys basically as opposed to anyone else so you're starting to get an idea about autistic females as far as the special interest goes they will become professional expert at the special interest whatever it happens to be whether it's horses or some kind of football or whether it's a air combat flight sim female autist will become expert at that particular special interest. You could call it an obsession. And they will get usually extremely good at air combat flight sims or whatever their special interest happens to be. They might even become the best person at this one particular special interest, better than anyone else, even better than the guys, because they're so obsessive about it. They, they're so hyper-focused on it. And here's the kicker. Because girls and women that are autistic in this day and age don't always get diagnosed by a doctor as being autistic, and because their parents and their teachers don't often know that they're autistic, nobody knows, including the girl or the woman, that she's autistic. Another thing about female autistics is that they're actually really good at schoolwork. They often get straight A's at school, and they often wear a mask. It's called wearing a mask. So they pretend to be normal. They hide their quirkiness when they're out in public. So because they wear a good mask and because they get straight A's at school, nobody really knows that there's a problem that they're having, which is all like an internal problem. Like a lot of, a lot of female autists are saying to each other, what, what kind of special underwear can I get that doesn't hurt me? Because they feel pain when they wear normal underwear. I mean, no, no normal person has this problem, right? So female autists have all of these sensory problems, hearing, bright light, uh, the touch on the skin. Generally speaking, they don't like to be touched. They don't want anyone to touch them. I'm not exactly sure why. I think it's to do with, it just overloads their senses. They're, they're highly sensitive people and their, their sensory perception of the world gets overloaded if they, if they have too much stimuli. For example, female autistics, they'll say they don't like to have a shower. They don't like the feeling of the water running down their back. They don't like to have a shower. Can you relate to that? I can't relate to that at all. Like things that are just the easiest normal thing in the world for normal people. And I'm not saying I'm completely normal, but hey, like compared to that, yes, I'm normal, okay? I can have a shower without any problems. I can wear underwear without any problems, you know. Autistic people, 
it's like a shower is just way too much sensory overload. The feeling of the water on their body, it's too much for them. And the thing with the underwear as well and so many other things. They're picky eaters. They don't like to eat certain foods. They're picky. They like to keep their food bland. They have digestive intestinal problems. One female autistic was saying that she only goes to do, she only goes to, to, to the bathroom uh, once every two weeks. She has a bowel movement once every two weeks. So there's something abnormal about her digestive system because she's autistic. She only does a poo once every fortnight because she's autistic. It's not something that she can help. She can't change how her body works. It's, it's the working of the body. It's not a choice. It's how the whole digestive system works in a female autist. So now you're starting to get an idea about how things are for an autistic female. Let's delve deeper into this. Let's, let's be honest here. It's weird. Let's delve deeper into this weirdness. So just bear with me here. I'm going to make a strong point, but just bear with me. So normal females, it has been well documented. If you're a guy that's dating a normal female, you shouldn't really tell her your feelings for her if you have feelings for her. Because if you do that, she'll be less attracted to you because you told her how, that you feel strongly for her. Like if you love a girl and you're on the second date and you tell her, oh, I love you, let's get married and have kids together. If you tell her that, even though she might be somewhat attracted to you or a lot attracted to you, if you tell, if you tell her that, her attraction to you is going to decrease. It's going to drop. Don't ask me why. It's just a known fact about female psychology and normal females. Okay, bear with me. Now we're going to look at that kind of concept with autistic females. So autistic females have this thing that's like an exaggerated version of the phenomenon that I just described. And most aut autistic females will identify with this one problem. It's a problem. It, it, there's, there's a name for it. I can't remember the name. It's something or other romance. It's something, some prefix to romance. And um, something or other romance, right? So what it is is that say an autistic female likes a guy, she might have a crush on him for years on end, but as soon as he realizes that she, she likes him, he turns around and he engages with her positively and maybe you know reciprocates her feelings or whatever. As soon as he does that, she genuinely loses all attraction for him in her heart, even though for any period of time, including years on end up to then, she secretly had a crush on him. She was secretly attracted to him. Autistic females often have this problem where they're attracted to someone and as soon as the guy shows interest, for some reason, the autistic female immediately loses attraction to that guy. And I could go on and on about that one sub subject. It's a very interesting phenomena that autistic females experience. I don't think autistic males experience it although it is it is possible for males to experience this but i think it's mostly an autistic female phenomenon they have a crush on a guy they're attracted to a guy the guy notices he reciprocates the feelings as soon as he reciprocates the feelings the autistic female immediately for some reason that she doesn't even understand why herself loses all attraction to him this is an autistic female characteristic so now we're starting to get deeper into what it means to be an autistic female what a curious situation an autistic female has and how out of this world, off this planet, their situation is. It's almost like they're from another planet. I was gonna say Mars, but I think, it, I think Venus is probably the better planet, right? Mars is the god of war and Venus is, I think, the planet, some feminine planet, so we'll say Venus. Special interest, digestive problems, wearing a mask to hide the quirks, hard to diagnose. So parents often don't know that their autistic daughter is autistic because she masks it so well and because she often gets straight A's in school. But there will be certain signs that she's autistic, but even psychologists often fail to see that a female is autistic. Instead, they'll misdiagnose the female as having ADHD or uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, 
etc 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 but they won't think of autism because mostly females don't seem to have autism and when they do actually have it they mask the autism very well they hide the autism very well because they're so good at putting on a mask when they're in public so it's hard for people around an autistic female to know that she's autistic you can be very smart and you can be associated with an autistic female such as you're her mum or, or her dad and or her school teacher and you won't even realize that she's autistic okay this is one of the facts about autistic females it's different with autistic boys it's easier to spot them with with autistic females for the reasons that I've just mentioned it's very hard to spot that and because they're you know growing up from the beginning being autistic they don't know any different they know that there's something different about them but they don't know that it has a name and so they can be very prone to like depression and feeling anxiety and stuff like that because they're, they're battling with a problem that they're not like everybody else and nobody seems to know anything about it or even that it's a, a known problem autistic females like I said they're good at school they often have very high intelligence they often have a very high IQ so you match the high IQ with the special interest with the laser sharp uh, focus they can often be extremely high performers and so what's the problem here then uh, with autistic females apart from the fact that they do a crap once a fortnight what's the problem if they're so high performance what's the problem well the problem is that sometimes the sensory overload gets way too much and they have a thing called a meltdown some people call it a breakdown but generally speaking it's known as a meltdown autistic females will have a meltdown M-E-L-T space D-O-W-N meltdown this is the bane of autistic females they try as much as possible to not bring on a meltdown I suppose in a way if you were to consider it similar to you, you wouldn't but if you were to consider it similar to uh, what's that one called where they have a fit epilepsy if you were to consider autism similar to epilepsy I know they're different but if you consider them to be similar epileptics have an epileptic fit well autists have an autistic meltdown an autistic meltdown shares some characteristics of an epileptic fit it, it can be stimulated by stress or whatever and it can be brought about by you know by overdoing it uh, like maybe academically or something like autistic females will say things like they work with such laser focus on their work that they forget to go to the toilet they'll be sitting in their, their chair in the office if they've got a job and they'll forget to get up and go to the toilet because they're so focused on doing their work so they have they have challenges that normal people just don't have and the normal people just couldn't conceive of couldn't comprehend of are totally unaware of things that just seem totally bizarre to a normal person autistic women uh, struggle with every single day of their life they're not very social autistic women are not very social they can be social especially if they feel like they can drop their mask and just be themselves but they're not that social most of the time and sometimes they need to get away from people you, you often hear autistic females saying I need to recharge my batteries after social uh, experiences or if you're in a if you're in a like a, a cafe or a restaurant with an autistic female when you get out of there she might be she might be like oh, I needed to get out of there it was too loud in there for me and I would be like oh, okay yeah I guess it was loud in there but not realizing that no like for them it's it's got to be something much more than what it is for us it's more like I don't even know I'm not going to pretend to know but I think it's something more like imagine people beating drums in your ears right autistic females are experiencing like drum beating next to them or something like it's just incredibly loud they're, they're highly sensitive people to noise to sunlight they're always wearing sunglasses so they have this peculiar set of traits I have a red light in the middle of nowhere because uh, there's roadworks up ahead so they go undiagnosed they might even be able to uh, get a private pilot's license without anyone knowing including themselves that they're autistic 
So if they're such high achievers, what's the problem with being autistic? Well, it's because of these meltdowns. They have meltdowns. They're, they're really severely limited in where they can go and what they can do, who they can interact with and what they can eat. Um, the, the, the conditions, you know, uh, the wind blowing on them, if it rains on them, all sorts of stuff that wouldn't, the, the, the clothing that they, they're able to wear, all sorts of stuff affects them that simply doesn't affect regular folk. So they're kind of severely restricted in one sense, but in the other sense, they're highly brilliant, sometimes, not all the time. I'm talking about what you would call a high functioning female autistic. So one that can do extremely well in a special interest, but has a hard time uh, wearing normal underwear or taking a shower or eating foods that, that they don't wanna eat or talking to people that they don't wanna to talk to. And it's not that they're trying to be rude, it's that they don't care, apparently. So there seems to be some empathy problem there. I don't know if it's actually a lack of empathy because I think it's been proven that autistic females actually have empathy. And I think it's been proven that they are actually capable of loving but in a lot of cases, unless it's to do with their special interest, they don't care. They care about their special interest. The things outside of it, they don't care. Uh, all right, so, but they're highly intelligent oftentimes, highly, highly intelligent. Their performance in certain things can be better than anyone else. So, Autism that we know of in the movies is the Dustin Hoffman and uh, Tom Cruise uh, movie uh, Rain Man Rain Man is like some quirky guy that Dustin Hoffman plays the character who Knows all facts and figures like he knows that Qantas is the safest airline blah 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 But anyways, so we're talking about female autism the public mostly thinks of autism as a thing that affects boys and that is very visible like they look retarded or something or they look crazy or they or they speak like a robot or they speak like an alien you know a boy that speaks like a retarded robot alien and is retarded and is a bit crazy and keeps on having meltdown type temp temper tantrums and, and it's a boy like maybe a boy wearing a crash helmet so he doesn't hurt himself his parents put a crash helmet on him and he's always punching holes through the drywall in the house and constantly sucking his thumb and having temper tantrums even though he's fully grown, he's six foot four, he's 200 pounds. This is what we think of when we think of autism, but often, often autism is actually a, a petite young lady who gets straight A's in school, who seems to be perfect, who seems a little bit quirky here and there and otherwise seems perfect, but occasionally Occasionally she goes missing because she knows that she's about to have a meltdown and so you're like why did why did young miss just disappear? Well, maybe she knows she's about to have a meltdown or maybe she just has a meltdown. What is a meltdown? An autistic female having a meltdown is where she starts uncontrollably crying and sobbing and screaming out loud. It sounds like a two-year-old's temper tantrum but it's not from a place of ego like I want or, or I didn't get the thing that I wanted or whatever. It's something that they have no control over whatsoever, a bit like an epileptic fit. Aut autistic people have these meltdowns that they have absolutely no control over. And so that, that's one of the many downsides to being autistic. On the, on the upside, they're often high IQ, straight A's, high achievers, laser sharp focus, brilliant performers, the best at a certain air combat video game that you can imagine. But on the other side, they can have meltdowns. They can lose control of themselves, even in public, it can be highly embarrassing. And after the meltdown, the, the bad part of the meltdown is after the meltdown, the, the, the weeks afterwards when they're feeling so embarrassed that they had a meltdown. So this is, in a nutshell, this is female autism. And there's many, many, many other things that I could say about female autism. But generally speaking, they don't like to talk on the phone. They don't, they don't like to make eye contact. They don't like to talk on the phone. They much prefer to talk via email or via text, but they don't like to talk on the phone, shit like that. They're just a completely different situation than most normal people. So, and it's, it's hard for normal people to grasp that because autistic females are always masking their autism 
what what fe- what female autistics should do is they should say to somebody, "I'm autistic. I would prefer if we spoke via email or text message instead of on the phone because I prefer not to speak on the phone." If an autistic female would say that, then most people that they're interacting with would be okay with that and would understand. But because autistic females are taking the line of masking their autism, they don't even know that they have autism, they just know that they don't like to talk on the phone, it makes them anxiety to talk on the phone, they'll instead sort of lie and we mean make an excuse why they can't talk on the phone and that can lead to things being dysfunctional. Like they might go, oh, I can't talk on the phone. I, I've got to go right now. I've got something important that I've got to do. It's not that they've got something important that they've got to do. It's just that someone's rung them up. They've picked up the phone and said, I'm sorry, I can't talk on the phone. I've got to do something. Bye. And slam the phone down. What they really should do is what I just said. Say, hey, look, I'm autistic. I'm happy to talk to you about whatever you're calling me about, my, my electricity bill or some shit. But how about we talk via email? I'm autistic, I prefer not to talk on the phone. Done, solved, problem solved. So there's a whole lot of coping strategies that autistic females can use instead of making lying excuses to not do the thing that they find uncomfortable, which the person at the other end of the phone or whatever has absolutely no idea that they're autistic and has absolutely no idea that they're uncomfortable talking on the phone. You should really be thankful that I've diagnosed you with autism. You know it's true. And let's be honest, there's a good chance that, look, I'm 90% certain that your loved ones, your parents and your siblings or whatever, don't even know that you have autism. I'm 90% certain that your parents don't even know that you're autistic. If you use this positively, you can begin to improve your life thanks to my diagnosis of your autism.